What's up guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about what equipment I use to create pictures like this, like this, and like this. Let's go. <laughs> What's up guys, happy Monday and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for those who checked out my last video. If you didn't get a chance to see it, I'll link it here and I'll link it in the description. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the equipment I use to capture great photos. The first thing I use is something that I never leave home without. That's right, you guessed it. The phone. I take my phone everywhere I go and it happens to be the most convenient camera I have. For instance, here's a couple of pictures that I took with my phone. Those look pretty good for a phone, right? And it's not like I had to go out and buy some fancy piece of equipment to get good quality photos. So you already see that you can get good quality photos out of your phone. The next thing I use is a camera. If you're just getting started out in photography and you don't have a lot of money, this camera right here is a really good camera. This camera is the Canon T7i. The Canon T7i retails for about $800. And it also comes with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. This kit lens comes equipped with autofocus settings, manual focus settings, and a built-in image stabilizer. This comes in handy when you're really trying to catch those handheld shots. The Canon T7i is a 24 megapixel camera and it comes with a Digic 7 image processor. This is one of Canon's newest image processors which really help those images pop. Here's a couple of pictures that I've taken with this camera. So as you see, the Canon T7i is a quality camera for the amount of money that you spend. I'll put a link to the camera in the description. Now moving on to lenses. The Canon EFS 18-55mm to lens is a really good lens for everyday shooting. However, it has its drawbacks. The widest f-stop on this lens is an f4. The f-stop or focal stop is the measurement of the aperture setting in a camera lens. The f-stop determines how much light is allowed to enter the lens and pass through to the sensor. Here's some images I've taken with this lens in good lighting and bad lighting situations. As you can see, in good lighting, this lens takes some really good photos, but in bad lighting, it doesn't thrive so well. The Canon EFS 24mm, also known as the pancake lens, if you could see why. Alright, this lens is not only good for wide-angle shooting, but it's also good for portrait shooting. It has an f-stop of 2.8, which means it allows light into this camera, so it's really good in low-light situation. Here are some wide-angle and portrait shots that I've taken with this lens. As you can see, this lens does really well. So, got another one because this is not my favorite. This is my favorite lens, the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 also known as the Nifty 50. Can you see that? See that? There it is. The Nifty 50. The Nifty 50 is really good because not only is it really good in low light, but it's really good for taking some of those really nice portraits. Here's some portraits that I've taken with this lens. The Canon T7i does have a crop sensor, which means that this lens is pretty much zoomed in by 1.6 times. So with this lens being zoomed in by 1.6 times, this 50 millimeter now turns into roughly a 85 millimeter, which is really good for good looking portraits. And that is why this is my favorite, 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 favorite lens. So I got one more lens to show you. And it kind of beats all of these other lenses I've shown you just because of the lens that it is. This is the Canon EF 17 to 40 millimeter lens. It does have a stop of f4. However, this is a pro lens from Canon. This is one of the Canon L series lens. Basically, what that means is that the image is much sharper, the image is much clearer, and it's much more durable. So with this lens, takes some really good photos although it's not that great in low light it still does pretty good here's some images that I've taken with this lens as you can see this lens produces some really really good looking photos and that's all I have as far as gear that I use for photography in next week's video I'm gonna be talking about the equipment I use to set up for studio shooting 
and what I use for shooting my YouTube videos. All of the gear that I talked about in this video, I'll link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe button, comment, and share. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.